Do you need, I'm, since I'm a good friend of Rachel and she won't mind, do you need to push back your chair and just do one little movement exercise before we um, begin? I just have a hunch that sitting is it's very, very simple. It's very... And then we can s stay standing after that for introductions. Yeah. As you've all been doing it. So it's just expansion contraction. But what we'll do is we'll start in the middle and we'll go out with the R and in with the O and we'll do that three times and then I'll add a verse that I love and that belongs to to us. All right, so we just we just I will to breathe the power of the sun. I will to feel the warmth of the world. The power, oh, I've forgotten it now. <laughs> the power of the sun fills me. The warmth of the world permeates me. I've missed out one line. Never mind, tomorrow we'll get it right. So if we stand here and we just go around the circle and say our given name and if you know its meaning and where you were born and your age now. Just that for beginnings. And I'll begin. My given name is Lee. It is Celtic for healer. And I was born in Windsor, England, 1941, which makes me 72 years old. I think what's extraordinary is if we just look around this circle from the moment. Just to sort of behold, that's my favorite word in the English language, by the way, to be there and hold the other. From the moment we each be learn to walk, we have been walking towards this moment and this particular group that, as far as I know, has not been together, at least in this lifetime before, just to even honor that. And we all come with agendas, you know, I've, I've been given the agenda to bring some, uh, a way of working with biography, and you've come hopefully to learn something. Um, but underneath that flows this other life of our destiny. And so I always ask people to be very, very attentive. Coffee breaks, all those moments in between. Because if you look 10 years from now back, I may not be, I might have to look from the great big hereafter, you might say, the reason I came to um, Lawrence for this group, this time, this particular class, is because I needed to hear one person give me one piece of information or ask one question that changes my life forever. And Steiner says that de destiny is, um, uh, uh, lives with these, within these two forces. One works outward from the heart of every human being and the other comes to meet us from the world about. So all of you are my destiny for this next week. And I think just to be always carrying that kind of imagination and then we begin to enter that force field, which is what we're gonna try and do more and more this week. So thank you. You can sit down now, we won't, we won't go back. I'll just say a few, this is really just to, um, I quote Steiner a lot because um, I want to give credit where credit's due. Um, one of the things he, he says is that humanity will not survive if it doesn't take the reality of destiny into its consciousness, waking up to the reality of destiny. And we must learn to read the paths of destiny as clearly as we see the physical world around us because only this will create real social forces for the future. Um, if I really knew, and Robin, uh, uh, you know, what was the thing you said about this individual will, if I really knew what each of you had come on earth to do 
and you knew what I had come on earth, what a totally different quality of life we would have together. Um, do any of you know what uh, the word destiny means? I mean, if you go... And it's very interesting. I think so many secrets are carried in language that we've kind of forgotten. But to destine means to arrange or design with particular purposes and goals in mind. In that single word is the imagination that something has gone into the design of our lives. By the way, I sort of rather discouraged note taking. I thought if you were sitting in an uncomfortable chair without <laughs> Um, I mean, of course you can take them, but don't wear your hand, you know, it's my, the, the most vital thing are these people sitting around you and the looks on their faces and everything, and what we don't remember we probably shouldn't have, you know, written about in the first place. But, <laughs> and of course, you know, because you've been studying with, Ro uh, with Robin, I mean, the whole idea of repeated earth lives, I mean, can you imagine the difference it would make if this law of consequences, there are consequences to what each and every one of us thinks and feels and does, how that would absolutely change culture and civilization. And really, Steiner, I mean, it's a kind of anguish, I think, in all of us that this has not really come into life and civilization, this thought that there are consequences to what we do, there will be futures to what we have thought and felt and done for everybody. For us, I, I'm very connected with the Middle East at the moment. For Assad in Syria, he won't get away with it forever. You know, this kind of thing. But how it would also awaken our own lives. And also the thought, because Robin, you talked about some karma, didn't you? The thought that we made promises. And I, th we made promises to each other sitting in this room. Have we, can we remember what those are in the moment? Was there something that any, each or any one of us needed to ask the other. Um, so that is the, and that's really the, the subplot to these life so cycles. When one of the arrangements that we share are these seven year um, life cycles that, um, and I think because we only really have so little time, I will just give a very, very quick um, uh, picture of the th which I, get, I think, Robin, you've also done, these three great life phases that we have. The Chinese used to um, say that you had three major life phases. One was one to learn, the other to fight, and the third to grow wise. And in the Persian, out of the Persian culture, originally came the three phases of the apprentice and the journeyman, or journeywoman, as we now say, and the master or mistress. And Steiner also breaks life into these f three major phases. That the first, we really learn what we've got to work, f work with. And in this middle phase, we work with, we struggle with what we've got in relation to what life brings us. Hopefully we don't go out there fighting everybody tooth and nail, but we this struggle. And then in the last phase, we can begin maybe to give some wisdom back to the world, born of the experiences that we've undergone. Um, and this also leads to us having really three biographies. We have a biography of the body that, you know, gets built up. I always think of it like in a car factory, you know, accessorized, hopefully, as much as possible. And that is sort of complete in the early 20s. And then we have this soul biography. Would anybody like to think what, what characterizes our soul development in general, very general terms, what tends to happen in our souls to keep moving? Um, you started grappling with uh, your feelings and your thoughts yeah. and everything that you've gathered from before. And and sort of crisis, yeah. And usually we come up against a crisis and think that things can't go on as they are, either in ourselves or in the world around us. That kind of, some people call it a death and resurrection uh, biography, where we're always hopefully coming up to something and needing to let go and expand into a new and fuller life. And then there's, and tons of work's been done that since the 70s of the last century. I mean, marvelous, marvelous work. And then we have this other, much subtler biography that I think Robin's also been speaking to, 
where this ego, this individuality, makes use of everything that's brought through the body, through our life experiences, and hopefully through that can not only develop and enrich itself, but also enrich the world. And this, in this biography, you can often see the real life themes of an individual. In famous people, you can go back and say, oh, you know, this is, everything seemed to conspire so that Mother Teresa or Gandhi or Martin Luther King realized their life purposes. It's also true for all of us. And I think we tend to come in on one or other lens of the great soul um, or spiritual values, you know, that you, you may find your whole life has been to do with truth or freedom or equality or beauty or goodness. You may have other factors too, but that this, is, this is really this sort of driving force that you've come to bring to the world, the gift you are bringing to the world. And whatever happens, and we'll go on to this in, in more detail, there's always an opportunity to realize that. And somebody else may say, but look, you're always, this is, you're always championing that cause, or you're always doing that, don't you see? And I think this can be a very, uh, an enormous comfort, because m many of the enterprises we would like to have, you know, the, the world is so hardened now that it's really hard to realize a lot of the things we a lot of the gifts. In fact, science says we only realize about a seventh of the impulses we bring in in any one lifetime. But you can always bring a little truth to a situation or a little kindness or a little beauty. So that's also very interesting. And, those, and, um, and there are periods too in life when you, and you've probably all had them when the wire lifts, as I say, and you've got to go under it and do it. You know, this is the moment I, this is one of the moments in my life I was born for. You know? Do it now and you might not get another opportunity. And there are fallow moments too. What's it Goethe had? What did he have 11 years after writing Faust, I think, before he did anything else? And, and I was very comforted once when somebody said to me, every seed needs its winter. There are rhythms in our lives. So that is also an important factor, and we'll come back to that. So I think that's all I wanted to say now. We'll start on the big journey um, with some this afternoon. But I think one way of waking up a little in this force field is that we wake in the morning and we think, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do the other. And we often don't notice what's come in that we couldn't have predicted. It's as if we've got this, this these plans and projects fill, consume our consciousness, and we often don't n notice this wave of destiny that's coming in from the outside. So I'm going to suggest you just take the next, we all take the next few moments, and from now until tomorrow morning, you just jot down what you are pretty certain you have to do. You know, you've got classes, you may have to call home and see if the kiddies are all right, you've got to get to a grocery store. Whatever it is you know now, is, or you're planning to do today. And then t we'll spend this first short session every day on reflecting on that and what's come out of sleep. And we just, so now if you do that now, you're then free to go to coffee, and we'll come back to that. You okay? <laughs> you okay? This is the things that we that you we that you know you have to do, or you can predict, or you know you want to do. You know, I'm I'm, I'm going to go and talk to Robin at lunchtime about his awful boarding school or whatever it is. But <laughs> starting from when you wake up, or do, do it from now. Do it from now. Yes. Yeah. And the moment you've done that, you're free to go and have a nice cup of coffee. How about that? And we'll meet this afternoon. It can be things that you intend to do? I think so, yes. Well, if you've got a reasonable chance of... Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important what you intend to do because... Yeah. <laughs> the life plan as it lives in you for the next 24 hours. The wishes of the soul are springing, the deeds of the will are thriving, 
the fruits of life are maturing. I feel my destiny, my destiny finds me. I feel my star, my star finds me. I feel my goals in life, my goals in life are finding me. My soul and the great world is one. Life grows more radiant about me. Life grows more challenging for me. Life grows more abundant within me. Yes, in the first week, um, Rachel did that in your rhythmic. Did she? Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I forgot the first line of that, that verse. It's, within my heart lives the power of the sun. Within my soul weaves the warmth of the world. I will to feel the power, will to breathe the power of the sun. I will to feel the warmth of the world power of the sun. Do you know this one fills me? The, uh, the warmth of the world penetrates me. And it was given for breathing. It was given, and it's lovely, you know. Now I'm an individual, now I'm a member of community. Anyway. So do you have one for coughing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I can find one. I'm sure that somebody's written about coffee. <laughs> That time. <laughs> <laughs>